Time now for our weekly news segment. All right, Tony. Hey, Tony. guys. <laughs> Hello. He's back. Merry Christmas. Uh, Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, man. Merry Christmas. Where are you? I'm in uh, Florida right now, actually. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I moved back. Yeah. And I got Saturdays back, which is good. So, yeah. So- sorry it took so long, but I had Pavel on. I just, I, I, I love talking to that guy. No, no, it's no, it's a good conversation. Like I was listening to it and cleaning my apartment, making rice and stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> I was tuning in. All right. So uh, yeah, you want to want to give us the news? I know we have quite quite a few stories, and we'll get through oh, that. Yeah. And then we can get viewers on stage. We can have people. Awesome. Jump on. I like your sweater, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, I got this years ago. People people are asking where I got it. I don't even remember who was selling it at the time. I just saw oh, the tweet of, for that MM crypto guy that was wearing it show up on my timeline. Yeah, yeah, maybe we can bring that up. It's funny. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the news section, everybody. First of all, again, um, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. I hope that you get to spend dinner with your loved ones and really appreciate these moments where finally you can all be at a table together because everybody may-, may be like in different states, different cities, different parts of the world. So it's truly the most beautiful time where we all get together. So hopefully you're going to have a great time. Uh, now, even better news, uh, CakePay adds over 500 new XMR purchasable gift and prepaid cards. So um, that's a lot. And now you can add MasterCards to Apple Pay and Google Pay wallets for smooth transactions, which makes it a lot easier to spend. And it is finally possible to choose exact amount for most prepaid debit cards and gift cards. So you're not going to have uh, leftover balances, basically. Um, I'm super happy about that- this. So wait, Tux, so the, the gift card thing is back and up and running? It's fully running? Yeah, uh, so we've had cake pay um, on the website only for a while. Um, but over time, the, the provider we were using, they were just lacking in availability and their stock would constantly be going out, especially for the prepaid Visa debit cards. But now we've got our old provider back because they were bought out by a different company and, and they're running again and they're willing to work with us. And so we've got basically everything we had before and even more, and you can choose exact denominations for almost all the gift cards, including the Visa and debit cards, uh, exact amounts. And it's got support. The MasterCards have support for Apple Pay and Google Pay, so you can have it on your phone and use it in real life. So yeah, you can you can get so many things on CakePay now. And, and you effectively, you just need an email, right? I mean, when That's I first... Pay, right? It's the same setup in terms of all you need is an email, right? Exactly the same. Um, and for for the prepaid uh, debit cards, uh, you do need to provide my prepaid center. They do ask for a bunch of information, and you can choose to give like like what information they give that you give them. But um, they do ask for like certain information. But for all the other gift cards, uh, yeah, all all you requires is an email, and then the gift card gets sent directly into your email, and that's it. It's pretty great. Amazing. Yeah, I was kind of, I was kind of sad when. Um... You guys had to shut it down for a little bit, and I'm happy that it came so fast back and so much better. Yeah, I, lo- I love that. You know, Vic, Vic did not give up on that, right? He, he oh, made no. it, oh, he did it, yeah. Back yeah. Better than ever. Yeah, because it's so good. <laughs> like now, we can put it in your Apple Pay, and you can get a prepaid card. Like it's not. That it's, have to be- it's one of the best selling points too when you're out there teaching people about crypto, teaching them about Monero, yeah. right? When you give tips. So yeah, hey, download Cake Well. I'll send you, you know, five dollars, ten dollars in Monero, and then when they're like, "Well, now what do I do with it?" We always had the end. Well, you use Cake Pay. So luckily, that's now back. We'll as mention a- it's not inside the app again yet, but we'll we'll see about that in the future. It's not completely. Um, that idea isn't gone. So okay, okay, yeah, but it's one of those things. Like it's so good, you can't let it go. I mean, just makes it a lot easier because before you would just tell people. Um, yeah, you got some Monero, and if the other person wants to get the wallet and blah blah, and now you can just you know, purchase gift cards and actually use it. So that's cool when you get people on. Uh, now let's get into two interesting stories, uh, which mention hacking. Um, so Lapsus dollar sign, it's basically um, a hacking group, GTA 6 hacker handed indefinite hospital order. Okay, so basically, what this whole article says, this 18 year old hacker leaked. Uh, clips of the forthcoming GTA 6 game, a lot of clips of how it looks like. And then basically what he did, he sent a text saying, we are Lapsus, remember our name, we have your user data, we have E, blah, blah, blah. Basically pay us 4 millions USD in Monero before the 20th. 
So not Bitcoin, Monero. People are uh, finally uh, catching on to the fact that Monero is private and it's just way less of a hassle when it comes to privacy and they don't want to risk anything. So they, they ask for Monero. Now, is this good? <laughs> not not really. It's one of those instances where Monero is used for uh, nefarious activities. But, you know, if you need to use it for good, if you need to use it for bad, Monero has your back. Um, yeah, so Monero does not judge. It's just it's just the best tool for for the job of digital cash. But yeah, it, it's also it's great exposure for Monero, right? People are now seeing it. They're reading these articles. Uh, people that are, you know, because this this was a tremendous story, right? This, this on BBC. This. So you know, people that might not even be that into crypto, and they're like, "Wait, what is this? What is this? Mon he asked for Monero. What is this Monero thing? Why mm -hmm. was?" He for Bitcoin. That's crazy, especially since it's with a GTA 6 thing. It's got huge exposure. Yeah. It gives yeah. it even more. So What's this kid? This kid's 18 years old, right? Amazing. Yeah, and very bold, but also just um, for curiosity. So I didn't know, but GTA 6, actually, the whole game is going to be about 760 gigabytes. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a big game. <laughs> Shit. Like a whole terabyte just to play it. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's for that story. And then former another security engineer. What was that? Sorry. Another, another same concept here, right? Yep. Yep. Same thing. So basically former security engineer for an international technology company, please guilty to hack into decentralized cryptocurrency exchanges. Um, you sent this to me and then I was reading about it and I was like, okay, so you know what he did, he admitted that he hacked, uh, he hacked both. And then he said, in, in total, Ahmed used his technical uh, know-how to steal over $12 million, $12 million and tried to cover his tracks by swapping stolen crypto for Monero, using crypto, cryptocurrency mixers, hopping across blockchains, and utilizing over his crypto exchanges. Okay, basically, this is the best option that he could have used from for all of them uh, to conduct his nefarious activities. So, and again... Yeah, did, did, they, did they confiscate his Monero? I didn't take a... I don't know if I took a good look at the article. Um, they, they said that, I mean, I think he said specifically that he's going to give back all the money that he stole from people in the beginning of the article. Um, okay. I'm curious if the U S government confiscated his winner because that that's right. We, in the past when we've seen confiscations with Bitcoin and the Bitcoin was auctioned off, I yeah. think there was a report going around saying that like, it was going to be the policy of the U S government to destroy destroy Monero that was com not destroyed but essentially never put it back on the market um, <laughs> which is which is interesting As a yeah. point, they auctioned it off yeah in this instance I'm pretty sure that um, it was like in the beginning somewhere um, basically he's he's going to give the money back to the people that he sold it to so I don't think the government is actually confiscating the, the Monero like in, in the past yeah, they would confiscate it and they would hold it and there will be large, large holders of certain cryptos, but yeah, yeah. another situation. And like I said, I think it is the policy of the U.S. government not to auction it off, but well, that's another topic, but it might be coming to play here. It sucks more for Bitcoin because if they actually hold it in Bitcoin and they become the largest holder, um, then th because there's just 21 million coins, so... Mm -hmm. That's gonna suck for Bitcoin. At least Monero, we have the uh, Telemission. Very smart implementation. Telemission is amazing. Um, okay, then let's get into uh, CBDC stuff and then we'll get into other things. Uh, the first thing, so the first time, I'm pretty sure in history, where a CBDC, the, um, the, digital, uh, the digital yen has been used to purchase gold. So. Uh, the first ever cross-border settlement for precious metals using the digital yuan, central bank digital currency, also known as the ECNY, was recorded on December 20th. They bought $14 million worth of gold. Um, this, the account will contribute financial strength to support Shanghai's in-depth implementation of the free trade pilot zone promoting strategy and promote the quality and upgrading of the International Trade Center. Um, and then they were talking about, let me see where that was exactly. They were talking about iron as well. Yeah, a Bank of China Shanghai is currently one of the lead supporters of digital yuan pilot testing and recently facilitated the import of iron ore to China via the CBDC. So 
We're starting to use CBDCs for more and more things, such as purchasing gold, iron. Now, you use CBDC to purchase these, these things, and then they know how much you have. <laughs> they know how what you purchased, how much of it, and all this information. So, yeah, you escape, uh, I guess you, you escape inflation on some level, you know, um, but they still, it's not private. They know how much you have and everything, and probably even where you store it. And it's a hassle to move gold around. Um, Weighs then, a little. What was that? I said weigh, weighs quite a bit. Yeah, it weighs quite a bit too. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, um, I have a friend, and he actually has uh, a whole safe, like <laughs> tens of pounds of of silver, maybe hundreds. I don't know. So good luck moving that if you want to move cities or anything, <laughs> or even states. Crazy. Yeah, that's why. Like again, Monero is so cool. You can literally have a bunch of money stored on your device move anywhere and it weighs nothing. It only weighs as much as your device that you carry with, with it weighs. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Um, then Palau advances CBDC with Ripple in phase two. So um, in previous episodes, we talked about a phase one of this implementation, Ripple helping Palau to reach their CBDC goals to move on to the second phase. Uh, basically, um, the, this is a stable coin and it's a digital currency back to the United States dollar, which uses Ripple's XRP, XRP ledger. Um, I was always thinking, especially a couple of years ago, um, when I heard the first time when Algorand is helping all these countries with CBDCs and, and Ripple now and all these things, and <laughs> definitely they, they're not part of the, the revolution because Monero would n never, or anybody in Monero would not never help with CBDCs or anything. So this was an interesting article. And they also said, um, so yesterday, uh, the Republic of Palau Ministry of Finance officially launched phase two of the Palau stablecoin program based on one-on-one -on -one tokenized US dollar. Uh, they seek to expand accessibility and user participation. Um, yeah, so CBDC is going to come soon for them as well in Palau. The Nigeria top banks collaborate on new uh, CNGN stablecoin. Uh, it's, it's a complement. It's not a substitute of what they already have in Nigeria. And it's interesting how, I think in, in the beginning of the year, we were just talking about how they have the in Nigeria, and then we would joke around how nobody uses it, just 0.5%. And now they force them to use it. And now they have uh, the stablecoin on top as well. So Nigerian banks are collaborating to create and oversee a new stablecoin, um, CNGN, which is a novel digital currency designed to bring advantages to both <laughs> token holders and the Nigerian economy. Um, basically, and there's a lot of banks partnering, Axis Bank, Sterling Bank, Pro uh, Providus, Carape. Um, but the CNGN, they said is a compliant and regulated consortium backed stablecoin that we have been advocating. It maintains a peg to a Naira in a reserve bank account. And um, the difference is that this new stablecoin is developed on public blockchains, banned to Polygon, Ethereum, BNB, Smart Chain, and Tron. Um, yes, and it's a complement, it's not a substitute. And that it's going to have broader capabilities. And it's the CNGN is overseen by a consortium involved in Nigerian banks. Um, yeah, so they're going to have this system as well, besides the uh, CBDC. Um, then we have what I thought was interesting from Monerica project, which you should definitely check out. It's really amazing. Uh, Ghostbox. So I actually never heard of Ghostbox until today. So Ghostbox is a privacy oriented free speech, one time payment email service hosted in uh, Warsaw. No internal encrypting huh. bullshit. Emails by design will inevitably be decrypted somewhere along their way to our server. Most importantly, which is interesting, we only share email address info when legally required by court order from a court with jurisdiction over our server. Even then, we always send a copy to the affected email address. And you can pay with this in, in Monero. That's cool. Yeah. So that was interesting. 
than foundation device. So for a long time now, foundation is a really well-made device and everybody wants Monero on, on foundation. And so uh, someone asked, Vanessa Harris asked, so when you all shipping Monero support? And they said, there's an active effort to create a passport firmware for to support Monero. We expect to see an outcome by end of quarter one next year. That's super exciting. Yeah. Yeah. That, know. that you know, all, all those, you know, the BTC privacy people, they're, they're becoming exposed to Monero. And there now there's this potentially uh, great option for Monero users to store their, store their crypto. I think last year I made a comment if they're going to support Monero. And I've, I'm not sure what response I got, but it wasn't. Yeah, I, I heard inklings of it, but now uh, I didn't really, I, I never really saw them directly talking about it. So this is, mm -hmm. this is really what they're confirming. That and it's they said quarter one, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty soon. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, awesome. that is awesome. Wait, so are they saying that people at Passport are actually, or people at Foundation are actually working on it? Uh, what what did it say, Tony? It's, uh, this is there's an active work. effort. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is. Oh, this is forked from. I guess maybe it's they not just a... have people that are actually working on the bounties, is what they're saying. Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, possibly. Yep, yep. That would be awesome, though, because the passports are really nice. It's a really nice device. It's really nice. Passport, Bitcoin. I mean, they're really nice. So that's even from the beginning, I was wondering. It would probably was... become the preferred hardware wallet option for Monero, right? I mean, because yeah, like, it's just so yeah. nice. That's yeah, so that's going to come soon. Cool. Super cool. Yeah. Perfect. We could, I think we could kind of thank Seth for that, right? He's he's a big part of that that team over there. Mm -hmm. I think he joined last year. Yeah, yeah but it's so cool. And it's kind of like under disguise. People will just think, "What do you have on Nokia still?" <laughs> like this is 2024. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Snake is cool, <laughs> but it's time to move on. So the design is so. And I cool. appreciate their their posture on open source and open hardware. They're very serious about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's that I'm excited about that. Now, this is interesting. What Gunbat uh, Fire tweeted? So, um, <laughs> um, you can now legally pack contracts in Bitcoin, Monero, gold, gallons of milk, literally anything you name it, you can. So, uh, let me see. Article 766 in Argentina: obligation of the debtor. The debtor must deliver the corresponding amount of the des designated currency, whether the currency is legal tender in the republic or not. So <laughs> you can use whatever you want basically to 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 pay back, though, which is very interesting. Um, yes, yeah, so you can pay back your debt, I guess, with milk or whatever the other person wants back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were talking about this with Pavel. Um, that's seems to be what what they're saying right uh gamba that was we have gamba in the chat um yeah, yeah that's cool that's cool if that's the case that's really cool and but uh, like that's with monero yeah you can yeah 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 which is awesome uh, i was having some conversation with um a guy some time ago like some people actually advocate for um just trading and no money and for me, like, it doesn't make any sense. I think we need money. So, but if we have money as well, and then you can opt out by doing this as well, legally. And that's, that's interesting. That's cool, I think. Because mm. I was thinking, like, the people that want, they want, they don't want money anymore. They want to go back to trading. Okay, well, what if I really want to get this plane ticket and they don't accept my, <laughs> I don't know, my cows or my sheep? And that's all I have, you know. So I need money. But if you have that on the side, that's cool. Now, um, the number of Monero transactions is surging, increasing from 25k per day to 50k per day. Does anyone have an explanation for the significant rise? That is big. And and uh, man, I say Mordinals, really? Are are they back? Are Mordinals? I don't think it's Mordinals. <laughs> I don't think they're really right. Nobody's really doing Mordinals because they were kind of, they're kind of booted off, right? It, they've made it difficult. <laughs> to Mordinals on yeah, TX Extra. They made it hard. They could still get around the limitations of TX Extra, but it was made harder for the way that they were doing it initially. And I don't think it took off at all. 
I didn't hear. I've never heard anything about Mordenal since the beginning of this year. Yeah, I think we would we would have certainly heard about it on Monerotopia, right? Um, yeah, Remsey is saying. Plus, I was buying substances for my New Year's party. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot Apparently, of substances. The currency of choice for preparing for, <laughs> for New Year's Eve parties. That's a lot of substances right there. <laughs> He's going hard. I mean, who knows, right? I mean, we, we've seen these spikes in the past. People say it could be, uh, you know, adversaries trying to gain information, right? Uh, mm -hmm. on, on Monero. Uh, for Dust attacks. Or ring signatures, right? Trying to get, it, it, trying to uh, basically gain information on the, on the decoys. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Maybe, maybe uh, Alaska Anon has some insights into that. If he's if he's in the chat, bring him up. <laughs> but every once in a while, we see a spike like that. Yeah, that is a weird. Uh, like within a day, it went from like twenty something k to fifty k. It is pretty odd that it would go up just like that. Unless there was some kind of. Man, we need we need body. We need body today. Yeah, like, like there's some kind of market signals or something, because like things have been you know looking and being kind of interesting in the market in the past few weeks. The coin's been kind of going up and down a little bit, but yeah. it could also be like dusting attacks, right? Right, potentially trying to sniff out all the the decoys, like you said. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, I mean, we don't know how how effective it is. I mean, we see we see these spikes every once in a while, so. Or somebody just just testing that. Maybe it's, maybe it's Arctic Mind just, just testing, <laughs> testing out the yeah. network. See what he can handle. I don't know. <laughs> He's testing Arctic, it in his apartment. Are you, are you spamming the Monero network, running some tests? <laughs> um, who knows? Yeah, we don't know. But exciting, what... to see, exciting to see whether it's for people that are trying to take it. You know, uh, gain insight into the Monero network, or if it's just organic adoption. Something. Have, I mean. I guess it wouldn't be organic adoption. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't know, but some kind of spam, or there is no spam, right? We we don't. Yeah, wish it was organic adoption, but I think it's just you know, there's it's something else. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens next. But what's cool is that right here, the fees actually got lower. So bring it on. Bring transactions as high as possible bring the volume because the fees will get lower. <laughs> so it's only good. Now the last I'm saying one. every time BTC fees go up, Monero usage increases, LTC tracks. And oh, yeah, that's also a good point because of the, I the constant. Really went up. I don't know. Yeah, the way it went up was weird. Like, of course, there have been a lot of people that have been using Monero because of Bitcoin's fees are so high. But the one day where it went from 20K to 50K is needs an explanation. Yeah, I'm really curious now, actually. Man, it'd, it'd be cool if, you know, uh, this new year is, is the year that Monero, it's, you know, steadily, like, levels up to, like, 50K transactions, right? Like, now we're, we're usually at the 20K number. Yeah, but it'd be beautiful to see if the new if the new normal is, is 50K transactions. I mean, right now, Bitcoin is still, for medium priority, it's 166 sat per byte, which is $10. So it's still, it's not as high as it was before but it's still pretty expensive yeah yeah so Never. we'll have to see um but let's talk about the letter from senator warren um criticizing oh, a recent yeah. <laughs> yeah um criticizing a recent letter to congress co-signed by dozens of former u.s military intelligence officers and national security professionals here's a letter from november 15th um and then it says let's read this the signatory state clearly that no amount of money, whether it be gold, dollars, or digital assets, should be used to fund illicit activity. But we must also be able to have a reasonable conversation about the latter when it comes to proposed solutions to the problem. We hope that expert voices from the digital asset industry will help balance the conversation and lead to real solutions that respect technology and allow it to continue to grow in the United States. Yes. So that letter that you're reading, that's what Kristen Smith wrote of the Blockchain Association. She, she was writing to members of of the house to try to convince them or members of the senate to not support senator warren's bill uh and then senator warren got all pissed <laughs> she wrote this letter so then senator warren wrote a letter yeah there's her letter if you scroll down that's yeah. the link. senator warren's letter 
basically uh <laughs> how, you know why are you out here trying to convince representatives not to support this bill um it's it's going to be for purposes of protecting citizens against financing terrorism things of that nature and then senator warren basically accusing accusing crypto companies and what what is this company called that wrote the letter or this uh, association block uh, blockchain association blockchain association of <laughs> be, being in bed with the crypto companies right and using their influence to, it's, it's it's just really funny and ironic right because this is what happens in the banking industry you have senator warren that's working with the bankers and is influenced by the bankers right and then senator warren saying uh this is not right um you have these cryptocurrency companies influencing and lobbying and influencing the um trying to influence the the regulators and then we see like sweetheart deal jobs being given out to people that that work in you know that are working in the industry that or whatever that work as regulators or work or even our our representative elected representatives and then they go work for the crypto industry it's just funny to see senator warren pointing out these mm -hmm. these things and being angry at about them when this is exactly what happens in in the banking industry with the banking regulations so finally senator warren is is waking up meanwhile she she's just as guilty of all these things that she's accusing them of if not worse even if you know some people do choose you know from an arrow to actually fund terrorist activities what about <laughs> and we all know this what about the actual government itself and the politicians that start the wars in the first place mm -hmm. um but yeah it's um so yeah in the letter she said dear mrs smith <laughs> I write regarding a troubling new report that you, your association and other crypto interests are, and other crypto interests are flexing a not so secret weapon, a small army of former defense, national security, and law enforcement officials to work on your behalf to undermine bipartisan efforts in Congress and the Biden administration to address the role of cryptocurrency in financing Hamas and other terrorist organizations. <laughs> yeah. Oh, only Senator Warren can can take the high road. Yeah, she's she's the worst, man. She's, she's the worst. But the thing is, the sad part is that when people lose arguments, and then they still keep going with their own arguments, you just sound more and more un really unsure of yourself, and that you have other, um, what should I say? other feelings towards the topic that you don't actually care mm. about actually solving the situation because she just doesn't make sense senator elizabeth warren um yeah she's on a, she's on a war path yeah she's on a war path yeah she is yeah um but yeah this was uh the news section for all right that's that's all, all right have. jody thank you so much man as always or thanks great to have you back Hopefully, thank you uh, yeah you could be a regular again that'd be great I hope, yeah i hope so i really hope so uh yeah yeah next next uh, weekend is gonna be new year's eve so we're gonna have a different message for for new year thank you yeah, um, yeah Guys, so i was thinking should, should we give out uh some some and some some topia should we do like a, an awards for for the year give out some monero awards what do you guys think that would that could be fun right like up 2023 how so Best. i don't know we can oh, come up oh. with some categories we could yeah, do yeah, yeah. New Year's Eve award show like i don't know uh individual or business that contributed most to growing monero adoption um you know best best monero development um i don't know we come up with something that, that could be fun yeah that'd be nice yeah yeah, and then we'll, next we'll see, we'll see if it happens. It will take work. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see, let's see. Maybe get the community involved with that. Like, that, that could be fun, though. Yeah. Um, it's like who won and for what, and yeah. 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 Thinking about it. Yeah, that'd be cool. Tony, thanks. Thank you so much, man. Stick around if you can.